of how the myriad ways that human dynamics are coupled with physical and ecological dynamics in long change. So let's mingle and talk and listen to each other, and I look forward to seeing what it's about. That bring over to Greg to get us started. Okay, great. Thanks, Brad. And uh, uh, welcome, everybody, to Boulder, Colorado. We're going to do a little uh, A-B adjustment. <laughs> so we, I, I should say that we have, in addition to the um, those of us here in person today, uh, we have, uh, I don't know how many people are signed on online, but I think we had, what, 30 or 40 uh, register to participate online. So for that reason, when we do question and answer session, we're going to use the microphone so that those folks who are connecting remotely uh, from across the planet and uh, can hear the conversation. That part of. Okay. So while Chad does this, I'm going to I'm going to say a few words, uh, just a few words of welcome. Um, I did want to say a few words about what um, makes this particular meeting um, somewhat unique and, and uh, what are the aims and, uh, and focuses for these next, next three days. So we're fortunate um, this year, which as some of you know is a transition year for CSDMS, um, to have support from the National Science Foundation's pre-events program. So pre-events is, uh, is a program that is designed to support research into extreme events and natural hazards, both from the viewpoint of ultimately being able to predict and understand hazards mechanistically and from the viewpoint of being able to live resiliently on a planet that presents hazards to us. Um, so one of the key aims of this meeting, as Brad said, is going to be to, um, to ex really to explore together what is the state of the art in using computational models to understand hazards and to live resiliently with them. So we can sort of diagram that, uh, that concept. Um, I think we can diagram the concept if I can advance the slide. OK. So while somebody thinks about how to advance the slide, I'm going to try to give you a, 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 a mental picture. Picture three circles. <laughs> I can picture them very well because I can see them. Uh, there's a circle called natural hazards. There's a circle called earth surface dynamics. And connecting with both of those is a circle that is computational modeling. Um, and th that's OK. I can, talk this, I can talk this through. So um, <laughs> <Sorry. laughs> Well, you know, we haven't been burned or buried or anything yet, so it's all good. Um, there are the circles. So when we think about natural hazards, um, <laughs> as opposed to technological hazards, thank you. <laughs> we, um, we, we think about things that are, that are worse, that slide's not advancing. We think about issues of vulnerability. How do we measure vulnerability? How do we map it? How do we quantify it? How do we model it? We think about issues of resilience, of assessing risk, of mitigation, of planning for potential future disasters, of responding to past disasters, and so on. On the other hand, when we think about uh, Earth surface dynamics, often the, the focus is on the process and the product that that process creates. So we're interested in understanding the bathymetry, the topography, the sediments of the Earth's surface. Uh, we're interested in the processes that shape those, so landslides, free flows, river processes, coastal dynamics, offshore deep marine processes, volcanic processes, and so on. So there's an obvious synergy between these two views of the world in several ways. I and mean, for one thing, geomorphic processes in some instances are the primary hazard, right? So you think about landslides, or you think about volcanic processes. They are changing the shape of the Earth even as they're presenting us with hazards that we need to live with somehow. There are other cases where the hazard, the primary hazard, is accompanied by some kind of geomorphic process. 
So think, for example, of co-seismic landsliding, where the earthquake also triggers landslides that blocks roads and damages infrastructure and so on. Or think about floods, where a consequence is often not just water and stuff getting wet, which is a nuisance, but it's also about sediment being moved. And that movement of sediment can undermine roadways. It can bury areas in mud and silt, and therefore compound the damage. Then there are cases where the primary hazard isn't necessarily a geomorphic one, but it may set the stage for accelerated geomorphic activity. So here a classical a classic example is wildfires, right? Where the ground is, is made vulnerable to rapid erosion, et cetera. So which each of these kinds of hazards and each of these kinds of processes, obviously one of the key kinds of tool in the toolkit, as Brad mentioned, is computational modeling. So we use models. As communities, we use them in a wide variety of ways from exploring basic ideas and visualizing dynamics all the way through the more sort of pragmatic uh, applications like using models in a planning context, a scenario assessment mode, or even ultimately, if we understand the processes well enough uh, to be able to do some kind of forecasting or prediction. So of course, this is a, a good moment to be thinking about modeling Earth surface processes and their role as hazards. You know, in, in the course of my career, we've gone as a community from a data drought to, in many ways, a data deluge. You know, we have increasingly uh, wide in extent and high in resolution data sets that measure the Earth's surface and its changes through time, right? So we can now actually realistically begin to think about how does a river change before and after a flood topographically? What does the evolution of a coastline look like? Okay. Um, this image on your right of part of the uh, Cape Cod seashore from Chris Sherwood actually is a, a, an example of one new emerging technology drone imaging that, that some of you who signed up for uh, Chris's clinic are gonna learn about um, in real time, so to speak. So, so, okay, so we think there's much to learn by bringing together a lens on computational modeling together with a hazards perspective and an earth surface dynamic. So in terms of today's and, and the next couple of days meeting. The format um, consists of a variety of different things. We're gonna start off with a set of keynote talks um, that are designed to cover uh, the problem from different angles and from the perspective of different kinds of processes. We're gonna have uh, breakout group discussions following that. We're gonna have a set of um, poster sessions this afternoon and tomorrow afternoon. Uh, and we're gonna do clinics. So those of you who may be new to um, the idea of a clinic, um, this is a two hour block of time in which you get to, to uh, have a hands on experience working with some particular technology or tool or data set or technique. Incidentally, I'm just out of curiosity, how many of you, this is a, your first time at a CSDMS hosted meeting? Awesome. So, and how many of you have been to previous systems annual meetings? Perfect. That's what we're looking for. So, so let me say that there's a couple of tangible products that we're hoping to get out of the meeting this week. Um, one of them is we would like to create a white paper. And the idea here is that we want to try to capture the conversation and the ideas presented here during this week in a, in a document that stands as a record and that can be used by ourselves as members of the community as a, as a sort of a record of what the community thinks are some of the key knowledge gaps and some of the key opportunities can also be used, for example, by funding agencies as a, as a sort of a signpost toward what these communities feel are their most important priorities and knowledge gaps and needs and so on. So that's the idea. We're looking to pinpoint new frontiers in process understanding to, to identify needs, develop strategies to make our models better, um, and to identify key knowledge gaps. So the raw materials for this white paper will come from our breakout group discussions. So thank you in advance to the note takers and the group leaders. Um, and uh, you know, you may ask, okay, well, who's actually gonna write this thing? And the answer I hope is you, um, or at least some of you. So uh, seriously, everybody here is, is invited if you're interested to participate in the white paper crafting process, turning these notes into prose over the course of the summer. Um, if you are interested in doing that, um, uh, there will be various opportunities to signal that interest and get involved. One way is to email csdms at colorado.edu. Another way is to speak to Albert Kettner. Where is Albert? Albert Kettner here, who's going to be coordinating the white paper process. 
Um, so we encourage everybody to participate in that. We may even reach out to a few of you. We encourage you very strongly. Okay, so that's one product. The second product that we're hoping will come of this, if there's sufficient interest, is a special issue of a journal. Um, so the sort of uh, tentative working theme here is on the role of models in understanding hazards and improving risk assessment. Um, and we're thinking that a, a reasonable venue for this would be the EGU journal, um, Natural Hazards and Earth System Science. We think we probably need about 15 as a minimum contributions to make this fly. Um, and we'll be following up with email over the summer to try to coordinate that effort with an eye toward trying to get expressions of interest at least by about mid-August. If you know already that you might be interested in this, please um, let us know, again, either by speaking to Albert in person or by sending an email to cstms at colorado.edu. Um, OK, so, so that's about this meeting. I, then I just I want to say a few words about CSDMS, since many of you are new uh, to the organization. Um, so CSDMS, the acronym Community Surface Dynamics Modeling System, um, it's, we're an organization that promotes computational modeling of Earth surface processes, or more broadly expanded planetary surface processes. And our, our aim is to do that by providing support for community activities like this one, for computing technology, and for education. Um, if you, by the way, those letters, if you say it with a soft C and sort of a hard D, it sounds like systems, systems. So, you sometimes hear people refer to it as systems. And then sometimes I get email that say systems, S-Y-S. Um, it's, um, it, that's what it is. So I'll, I'll just give you a few highlights from activities over the past year. In terms of community, our membership continues to grow. So we've been growing at about 150 new members per year, the past several years. So we're up to about 1,700 members. Welcome, new members. Um, one recent highlight was that a month ago here uh, in Boulder, we held a workshop co-sponsored with our sister organization, which is called CIG, the sort of tectonics equivalent of CSDMS, on the theme of uh, coupled modeling of tectonics and surface processes. And some of you here were there then, so thank you for your, um, your enthusiasm in coming to two meetings in the same month. Um, so look for a white paper coming out of that workshop in the next couple months. Um, we continue to support the model repository. This is a place where you can put your favorite code on the web for um, uh, for your colleagues to share and use, and you can add metadata, you can attach a DOI to your model if you like. We'll even track, track an H index for your model uh, if you're interested in that. So those are a few community highlights. In terms of computing, we continue to support the systems modeling framework, um, which many of you have used, and the, and the packages that build on that, like the web modeling tool and the Python modeling tool. Um, IMT is continuing to be developed. Some of you saw a demo last year. Um, we now have a more efficient pathway to get your C and C++ codes to operate as Python components. So if anybody has a C or C++ code that you're interested in making into a component, come see us. Uh, another technological highlight, we have, as some of you know, transitioned now from the old CSDMS supercomputer Beach to a new system called Blanca. So Blanca is actually a shared system. It's, um, it's a University of Colorado research computing facility on which CSDMS has invested in a couple of nodes. So our members, you all, have priority access to those nodes, but can use others' nodes on the system if need be at a lower priority. And others on the system can use CSDMS nodes at a lower priority when they need to. So it's a, it's a shared resource model. We hope to add more nodes over the coming year. Um, so stay tuned for info on that. In the education um, realm, we continue to support the education and knowledge transfer repository that contains materials developed by members of the community, including many people here. A um, couple of recent additions to that, I won't list all of these, but um, Nicole Gasparini and colleagues have provided a new set of notebook tutorials about land lab modeling. Um, and some of you will uh, look at those um, in a clinic later this week. Um, Irina Overaim and colleagues have provided a um, set of teaching notebooks on cold regions and permafrost modeling. We have new barrier, uh, barrier island and marsh evolution model with teaching material accompanying it from Rebecca Lozon and Brad Murray. Um, there's pre and post lab survey material to accompany web modeling tool plus ROMs, the regional ocean modeling system. So lots of good stuff on that, on that portal to take advantage. 
one other new thing that you, you may have seen is um, we've started to do quarterly software releases accompanied by short newsletters. Um, so some of you received this uh, first inaugural newsletter earlier this month. So this is a good, this is a source to learn about little technological innovations, new software products and so on. Um, uh, and, and hopefully uh, long enough to be interesting, but short enough uh, not to allow you to get too impatient. Okay. Another thing I want to do is I want to thank our supporting organizations. So I mentioned um, support from NSF for this meeting through pre-events. I also want to acknowledge the Sediment Experimentalist Network, who have um, helped to uh, support some of the attendees at this meeting. So welcome, Sen. You'll have a chance to learn a little bit more about what they're about tomorrow night at the banquet. And also new partners this year, the Polar Research Coordination Network, RCN, um, who have sent half a dozen of their folks to come and join us this week. So thank you and welcome. Um, let's see, another thing I should say is awards. So normally at CSDMS annual meetings, we offer a, a number of awards, including a Lifetime Achievement Award, uh, Program Director's Award. This being sort of a special meeting and a transitional period, we're not doing those two awards this year, but look for them to come back next year. We will, however, uh, be awarding the um, Savitsky Student Modeler Award. Um, this year's awardee is Julio Hoffman. Have, uh, from Stanford University, and we'll have an opportunity to honor Julio um, tomorrow night at the banquet. And Julio is going to be giving us a keynote talk um, later this afternoon. Also at the banquet, you'll get to find out who is the winner of the best poster award, which you also get to vote for. Um, so more, in, you'll learn more about how to vote um, later this afternoon for the poster session. Okay. Uh, lastly, a round of thanks to the CSDMS Integration Facility team and associates who are pictured here. So putting on a meeting like this is a tremendous amount of work, There's a lot that's gone on behind the scenes, and these folks are, are uh, responsible for making it happen. Um, I want to, in particular, single out, um, first of all, the efforts of Lynn McCready, who's in many ways the coordinator and, and maestro of this meeting. Where is Lynn? She's out maestroing. Okay. Thank you, Lynn. If anybody has... Uh, so if anyone has logistical needs, um, Lynn is the maestro to see. I also want to in particular thank Albert Kettner, who is the PI on the award that is funding this meeting. Um, so thank you, Albert. Um, and, and thank you to the entire team. I will point out especially that the systems integration facility team have also the, um, the uh, benefactors for the beer that you're going to enjoy over posters this afternoon and tomorrow. So you can thank a systems integration facility person when you see them. Okay, that, that's almost all I have. One um, logistical note. So those of you who are doing Chris Sherwood's um, clinic this afternoon on, uh, uh, sorry, the clinic is, clinic is Wednesday, but there will be a drone flight at lunch today to collect the data that you'll use during the clinic. Um, you don't have a lot of time to do this. The flight location is going to be um, an unfortunately somewhat boring piece of topography called Print Up Field, which is about a 10 minute walk in that direction. Um, so you'll have to kind of move quickly during lunch. Chris, where, where and when do you want people to gather for that? Okay, so after lunch, gather on the patio for a walk over at about one. Okay, that's about all I have. I want to now turn the floor over to 